Hi everyone and welcome back to the Bitcoin Bridge. Now, Dominium Blockchain Services is a BAAS company or a blockchain as a service company based in London, UK and with operational offices in Nigeria and Sierra Leone. If that sounds interesting, stay tuned because we're going to be talking to Mohammed Ibrahim Jager, who's the co-founder, and uh, he says they have the perfect solution for all of Africa's data issues, of which there are many. For as much as there is potential, there's also a lot of challenges too, and he's going to tell us all about it. Mohammed Jager, welcome to the Bitcoin Bridge, and I think you're our first guest from Africa, so it's an honor to have you on the show. Thanks for coming. Oh, I feel very honored, John. Thank you so much for having me on this platform. I'm so excited to be here to share our story about what we're doing to Africa and how we're using blockchain to solve African problem. Yeah, well, I think when we saw uh, when we saw you and your co-founder present at CoinGeek in Zurich, we were we were really interested in in the scope of the project and you know the potential it has. When I came to Bitcoin, you know, ten years ago, I probably I didn't expect to be talking about things like this, but here we are. So could you please tell me about uh, Dominium, the company? You're a, a blockchain as a service company and you're going to you're going to look at things like uh, digitizing land records, uh, cargo tracking, and pretty much anything else you can imagine in that field. So can you tell us about the company and uh, how it formed and and how you came to be on the BSV blockchain? Thank you so much, uh, John. Uh, the medium came to be because uh, we uh, understand we are Africans. I understand uh, we did the, the dynamics of Africa, and uh, we came to be to see how we can be able to help uh, Africa solve this problem using blockchain. Because uh, the medium actually is a, is, a, is a blockchain solution company which are providing blockchain as a service. And uh, is established to uh, assist governments and companies integrate blockchain into their operations. Uh, in as much as uh, the company headquarters is the UK, and uh, its R&D unit is located in San Francisco, and the Technology Resource Center is in Tallinn, that is Estonia. Right. Um, this actually was uh, what we feel to be able to see how we can be able to help governments in Africa in terms of optimizing their services, increasing efficiency, bringing transparency, and also managing data. So we picked two use cases. Uh, before jumping into blockchain strategy, you know, we had to reflect on what we know about technology adoption in, uh, in particular around the transformation processes of uh, uh, the, te- the foundation of technology, which one of the most re- relevant example is around the blockchain land register and property project that we took because we understand over 70% of residential land, residential land in the developing world are uh, being unofficially registered register because uh, the goal at which we will be able to see is to be able to see how best we could be able to help digitize and how do we help optimize the services. It's a real problem because the governments in Africa is finding it difficult to know who owns what and who is where. Yeah. Issue of land grabbing, issue of ethnic clash of land is a very serious issue. And we felt we can step in to help this government in terms of digitizing the processing and also making them provide and giving them the data into one platform, whereby with a click of a button, they will be able to assess and know who is where how, and who else works. And this is going to be a foundation for e-governments. So that's one use case we picked, the land system. The second use case we also looked at is in the is in the in the maritime because we understand the supply chain and the maritime management uh, happened to have a very big gap because there was an IASPS code which uh, it been launched and we most governments in Africa didn't adopt that technology mm-hmm. because they didn't have the 
the capability to do that. So Dominion Capital Tracking Notes uh, was delivering a one-stop shop platform needed by shippers and also freight forwarders to loaders, to carriers, to charters to complete, you know, to bring the, that international cargo tracking notes process with ability of making payments via the platform because uh, there's an underlying infrastructure uh, which is delivering that necessary security rigor for such sensitive systems and data yeah. because that is why Domino CTS uh, solution is yielding the capability the capability and capacity uh, to ascertain shipment origin and also track shipments movement to determine content of the goods that's been imported and also exported in any country. It's, uh, this uh, actually uh, creates a level of information transparency that actually also prevents global trafficking of prohibited items right. and uh, also across the national boundaries because it helps generate a full suit of documentation with production and processing verified as to commodity and also value of origin and destination between respective parties as well in the shipping chain because cargos are required worldwide to have tax platform. So we took that use case also to give governments the capabilities to have such solutions in their ports so that they could manage this real synchronized one-stop shop supply chain platform. When did the company start? Yeah, the company started in 2017. Mm -hmm. And uh, we came to be because, yeah, we came to, we, we formed the company because of the gap that I told you that we saw in different uh, governments not to be able to identify, not to be able to optimize those services. It's more or less like we were the people that saw tomorrow. We were trying to protect governments to have control in their hands and also using the most trusted, most transparent technology, which is the blockchain That's on their right. system. So where, where did you first hear about the BSV blockchain and uh, who was it who decided that that was the way to go? Yeah, the, the BSV blockchain, uh, we got to hear from the BSV from our big boss and partner, Jimmy, who mm -hmm. is a very uh, good friend of my partner, Mr. Jeffrey, our CEO. Mm -hmm. They're very good friends and, uh, and they began to compare notes and understand that we are doing something in, in the industry that they are very interested in. And it's very important for us to leverage on such of their capabilities so that we can be able to solidify whatever we're doing and also have a strong backbone. Because whatever you're doing, you need to collaborate and also That's integrate right. with certain strategic partners that you share the same vision mm -hmm. so that you could have something on a bigger note and also because of the kind of projects we are taking, we're taking projects on a B2B uh, model, which is uh, a very big project that will need to require a very uh, solid backbone in to be able to achieve that. So I heard you're you're working on a, a land management system in is it uh, Abia State in Nigeria, and a Dominium Marine project in Sierra Leone. Yes. At uh, how far advanced are those projects? Are we yes. are we at the trial stage or are we just uh, building the system still? Where where is it at? Um, interestingly, the projects are projects that are very very dear to us because. Uh, we took it upon ourselves to look at it from different angle. Mm -hmm. um, we, when we came in with the idea to help governments to be able to digitize their land system, we approached different governments and also talked to them on a bigger way. We went to Bahamas, we went to uh, different cities, we went to Gambia, we started approaching them to tell them to express interest to come in to help them uh, 
uh, give them those capabilities and also improve uh, their, 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 their present condition by digitizing the land system and helping them have control and also increasing their revenue, which is a bottom line that, will, that has actually interest them. So, but uh, that's really uh, took us around different aspects, but we said, okay, let's come back to Nigeria. Nigeria is actually a federal state. We have 36 states and we can actually reach out to the states which have small population of uh, the least states in Nigeria has 1.5 population. Abia has over uh, 2.5 population. And we approached the government and they felt, they, they felt very interested with what we with coming to offer to them. So we went there and uh, helped them identify some of the need gap and also took it in a stage whereby helping them, first of all, move their paper data and digitize it, whereby making it electronic and also bringing some kind of efficiency in terms of their service delivery, whereby increasing their, their workout time in terms of application and also the certification of process to make sure that uh, uh, people get those service delivery in no time. So the government was very, very happy with us because we help them block leakages and also we increase uh, revenue to them, mm -hmm. which also uh, was a very, very exciting moment for them. And uh, also we use the same model in the land system. When we approach different governments, we reach out to uh, the government of Syria alone, which Syria alone we know is a very small country. And uh, sometimes if you reach out to such countries, you would like to know what's, how, and uh, how do you be able to engage them? Because bigger countries tend to delay and also uh, yeah. not take things as fast as possible. So it's also good for us to use it as a use case to start small and now get experience and learn from those experiences that we can build on in when we take uh, the next challenge, which is bigger countries. Yeah, well, uh, I, Nigeria is definitely a, a large one to tackle. It's a uh... I think it's the 26th largest economy in the in the entire world and uh, of course the largest in Africa both in GDP and population so th there's a lot to do there I think we learned we learned we learned a lot we learned a lot actually because mm. as I mentioned earlier you know African population is about uh, 1.2 billion people mm -hmm. and uh, we have at least about 10 million businesses on the content, uh, we have we have over 10 million businesses from uh, 54 countries, and uh, the major attraction for Africa is, is that large population because it's that it's, it's also it's hints at a sizable addressable market. But what happens when your when your target is the government of that 54 countries, yeah. and uh, uh, it's actually. We, we 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 set out to build dominion in as much as we know that it's going to be a hard work but we didn't anticipate that getting our first customer will be the most difficult part actually right so when you when you said you were able to increase the revenues for uh, the government in Abia state uh, are you talking about actual revenues or is this a, a projection at this stage about actual revenues. We right. talked about actual revenues because uh, revenue is more or less like uh, uh, if the government is making, let's say, for example, uh, $1,000 in a year, yeah. we stack it up to uh, almost a million dollars because we've created a system in place and also tie it to payments and also where the system cannot, there's no uh, transaction that goes within the hand. The transaction is being done electric, electronically. And also that has helped us be able to address 
a serious problem that the government is really facing because collection of revenue, it's a very, very huge tax on the government in mm -hmm. Africa. And also designing a system that will be able to block leakages and brings checks and balances by terms of optimizing whatever it's doing and also utilizing and bringing a model that will make it a one-stop shop and creating a value chain whereby it starts from this end, from the, the, the application process, and it goes to this end, the payment process, which is end-to-end, -end, and that has helped it, uh, made it a bit simple. It's the same, it's the same story that we had with uh, serial loan, because in the, in the serial loan market, when we went, they were doing everything manually. They only had a uh, few computers there, and payments were being made with cash, and you know such things you can't even track it. Mm -hmm. There's no proper even data to manage. You don't even know how many ships coming with a click of a button. You don't know how many ships came in, where they're coming from, and what have you. So if those one file get missed out, you miss out records and you find a difficulty in terms of having that. So that has helped us to be able to help increase and also project revenue because of the partnership we did. We helped them raise, uh, increase their revenue to over $2 million mm -hmm. in Syria with the cargo tracking. Wow, that's a lot. So, yeah, I guess I, one one other thing I wanted to ask you about was, you, we often hear about the uh, the potential that exists in uh, in countries like this and markets like this, and there definitely is a lot. But there's also a lot of uh, so maybe hurdles or you know maybe even roadblocks along the way. So could you tell me what some of the the biggest challenges you found so far have been? Yeah, actually. Um... We, we actually, uh, we pushed to different countries. We, we challenged them in terms of uh, going down to pitch your solution and uh, trying to let them know that they can be able to help, uh, help them increase their revenue. Because, you know, government is always government. And uh, some of them, uh, in terms of decision-making, it takes a very longer time for them in terms of responsing responding to you and uh, challenges in terms of uh, letting them see the big picture and telling some of times they tell you that we don't have money to pay you for the services. So we had to pick up a different business model because the business model was to be like a, a PPP model where we, uh, we approach them and deploy the technology, and uh, we share revenue yeah? because it's been a very major challenge for most governments to tell you that, oh, we're very interested in this solution and we're happy to pay you to deploy the service. They will tell you that, oh, guys, we're very happy with it, we're sorry, we can afford it, so maybe you can, some other time we'll make, raise money, we can come back. So you can now tell them no. We actually are happy to do this thing because we see ourselves as solution providers. Mm -hmm. That is the most critical part. We see ourselves as solution providers. Mm -hmm. We try to educate the government about that we have a different business model because mm -hmm. money is secondary to us. We are we see ourselves as solution providers. So mm -hmm. most importantly, what concerns us is providing the solution for them. We try to identify the problem to them, state it clearly to them, tell them that this is where you are, you can get to this point. But getting to this point will cost you X amount. But if you don't have the, the money, the resources to get to this amount, we're ready to take you there and we share revenue with you. So that business model excites them because we're coming to bring them a service without a single investment. We come in to provide, to deploy, to train, to transfer technology to them at no cost to them, at no initial cost to them. 
Right. What was their reaction when you said uh, blockchain, or did did you even mention the word Bitcoin in your pitch? No, no, no. We didn't mention Bitcoin in our pitch because yeah. you know a lot of them have uh, this uh, uh, mentality around Bitcoin. Yeah. But uh, we educate them because uh, we told them that uh, blockchain is a platform. And crypto, or uh, Bitcoin, is is an application. Mm-hmm. You understand? Yeah, so we try to educate them, uh, and also try to let them that Africa have an increasing and advancing social economic growth, and the continent must embrace blockchain because and adopt it. Because the African uh, continent is progressing cash and also virtual currencies. And we, but because we have to bring something that African governments can fully adopt blockchain to enhance their own digital services and also part of also decentralized their technology by making it difficult to come to control and also manage things. Yeah, exactly. And I think the uh, the security of the blockchain is probably a major factor too. The, the the point that people can't tamper with the data once it's stored on the blockchain, that kind of thing. So what's the next step for you guys? Like, uh, are you, when are we going to see some transactions on chain for uh, for these projects? Yeah, we are we are aggressively moving very fast, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, this use two projects I told you we are we already implemented with uh, yeah. with, uh, with these two countries are just a tip of the iceberg because we're talking to almost ten governments and uh, we are getting some very good feedbacks from those governments, and uh, we 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 are hoping COVID actually slowed us down. But we're going to go very fast within this period to try and close uh, uh, the relationship we have so that we can transfer some of those technology on the chain and uh, quickly start utilizing the transaction, especially the issue in the uh, identity and authentication and verification platform. It's a very, very uh, issue of identity is a very huge gap in yeah. Africa. Uh, the issue of uh, e-signature, uh, the issue of uh, access control, the issue of self-ID, the issue of uh, identification and uh, remote INC. It's, uh, these are uh, unique products that we came up with. And uh, we're very, very, we're getting very interesting uh, feedbacks uh, and uh, we're trying to make sure that we close up and finalize conversation with those companies so that we can quickly technologies and transfer this trans- transaction on the on the chain. Could you give me an example of some of the feedback they've given you? Uh, the feedback that we're giving is more or less like, you know, as I mentioned earlier, Governments don't behave like private organization. No. They don't give you an answer like this. Mm-hmm. It's a process. You go in to pay, you go assimilate, and you know they are governments. They have a structure. They have a system in place. They, they not like uh, private sector mindset that once you come into picture the CEO, he takes the shot and that's all. They look to well. look at it and look at uh, various uh, uh, different. Uh, policies around the government, whether there's something that con- they are bringing contrary or that will complicate their 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 government uh, policies. But if that's cleared, they will not move it to get a uh, decision because pass it to the people, the technical people, pass it now to the to the to the to the to the minister or after the minister, you pass it to the to the president for approval and consent before they will now give you go ahead and offer to to deploy so once you have a conversation going with government 
and you see the appetite, you see the willingness, you see the, the open-minded nature of them that they are willing to learn, they are ready to adopt the technology, it gives you a very positive feedback that you know that this is a, go- this is a win already. Yeah, I'm very encouraged to hear that the uh, the feedback's been positive so far, and that they are actually open to uh, to these new solutions. I mean, that that's really great to hear. So, um, tell me if if someone's watching this and they're interested in getting in touch or maybe doing a collaboration with you, um, how can they contact you? We are very much happy to collaborate. As I told you, that Africa is an entrepreneur's heaven. We have so much problems that we can solve using technology, be it security, be it uh, land, be it different sectors. We just pick two use cases now, the land and the cargo track and the third use case is identity management system. So we have, we are ready to help governments, we are to help the system in Africa to be able to move that. And we are very open to collaborate with every interesting partner that has, that shares the same vision with us so that we can do that. We can be reached out uh, via uh, my email, mohammed.jega at dominion.io mm-hmm. or info at dominion.io. Uh, I'm also available on, on LinkedIn. Uh, you can reach out to me. Uh, also, we have our contact number on our website, uh, uh, www.dominion.io. We are very happy to gets interesting partners that can come in to come and help us solve this big problem of Africa, help us transform Africa, help us see how we can be able to give, take Africa to that stage that it's been have vision to reach. To reach. Yeah, well, if we can convince enough people, I think uh, BSV is going to offer the best solution yet to these kinds of problems. And, of course, I wish you all the best with it. So uh, I want to say thank you again for coming on the show today. And um, please come back and give us a progress report because uh, I'd love to hear how it's going. Thank you so much, John. Uh, we are so excited to be part of the BSD uh, ecosystem uh, companies. And uh, we've been promoting the BSD and telling the story and uh, the Nigerian markets and it's, it's, it's actually a very interesting market, the African market is a very interesting market for us. And uh, we, are, we are BSD ambassadors and we're very happy to push and also promote the platform. And we're happy to work closely with other BSD companies so that we can be able to help this nation. And very soon I'll come to you with some interesting success stories to share with you that, that will excite you and uh, will make you Celebrate us more. Thank you so much for having me, John. Excellent. I'm looking forward to it.